Hello and welcome to the Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi. In this show, as you know, that we have been bringing leading personalities, and each week we have shared their stories, their views, and their vision, and what an interesting journey it has been with all of you. Uh, today also we have a very special guest on this show on Rajya Sabha TV. Somebody who has held very lot of eminent positions actually, and also. Have been a part of the government early and the system. A former member of parliament from Rajya Sabha, Mr. N K Singh. Welcome to the show, Mr. Singh. Thank you. What a delight it is to talk to you. First of all, uh, my but, pleasure. Uh, but you know, we are talking at a time which is very relevant and important, and Bihar elections. And yes. let me start with that, uh, since you not only represent uh, here in the show also as a politician, somebody who's really tried to understand through your writings, to your analysis, what Bihar is and what Bihar should be. And this is an interesting time that we are talking about it. So tell us, I mean, what is this time? Explain to us because we are going to now witness the results as well. Well, you know, I think that uh, Bihar traditionally has been slow in making a transition from a stratified feudal order to a more modern economy. Bihar's economic backwardness has been something endemic, which for a long time made it acquire the pejorative expression of a Bimaru state. Mm. Uh, during the last uh, 10 years of Nitish Kumar's chief ministership, the first seven years did see very significant progress and change in terms of GDP growth, improvements in health and uh, education and other indices. And uh, the last, of course, the three years, of course, uh, he has concentrated more on survival of the government and development to some extent has taken a back seat. At the same time, Whereas the average quest of a Bihari has been to seek a better life quality, it is difficult to say whether Bihar has crawled out mm. of the traditional mold of what is loosely described as identity politics. You know, if I refer to your book itself, The New Bihar, where you talk about, when you talk about even Nitish Kumar's tenure and what he did actually that time, it does reflect as to what, how Bihar was trying at least to meet up with the challenges. And so I think this, literally this, on the road this election would represent the blend of uh, quest for development with identity politics and the mixture and the blend of uh, this particular chemistry would ultimately determine mm. the, the final outcome of the Bihar elections, which is, uh, whose results are only, today is the last day of poll. Yes, yeah, and that's and, right. And, it's and, very um, interesting to talk. And uh, Sunday the results are out. But these are the two factors which will play. The factor, three factors, I yeah. would say. One is the factor of... Uh, the traditional identity politics yeah. discussed in class. The other is a factor of the quest for Bihar's development and getting out of the traditional set. And there's a third factor, which is an interesting factor, which is that if the average demographic age of India mm. is about 24, the average median age of Bihar is 18 to 20, which shows that not only India is young, but Bihar is much younger than a young India. Actually, you reflect, uh, and, and I would really agree because I traveled to Bihar and also reported on these issues. And I saw this quest, I would say, not only for Bihar, the new Bihar, which is your book. Uh, people are looking forward to, you know, a, a new life in Bihar. I mean, they are looking for development, a good life, good life with dignity. But uh, political parties, if you look at that, still bang on and, you know, ride on the same identity politics, caste and class mixed. Uh, which is going on, which is, a, which is a contrarian kind of position. Well, you know, as I said much earlier in my comment, that Bihar was historically much slower in making a transition from a, a feudal, later an agrarian economy to a modern economic order. And the tardiness of this transition would explain the continued persistence of what is loosely described uh, descriptively as identity politics forces. Uh, which uh, sometimes plays out, mm. sometimes gets played in mm. by the quest for development. And who does that? I mean, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, this burden should be going on to the political Look, for instance, this entire controversy on who, this who takes whole, it ahead, finally. whole story of reservations. Yeah. Now, reservations have been fairly central to consistently almost every government which has been in office in, in Bihar. A needless controversy was raised when... Mm. Um, some remark was attributed to the Mr. Mohan Bhagwat, and of it's course true. it was it was clarified. And I think that this whole issue of reservation, I mean, you know, this this to some extent the debate itself represents that how much short 
have political parties and development process been providing adequate jobs. If you look at migratory patterns, yeah, true. the I'm number of Biharis yeah. who are seeking employment opportunities Still, yeah, outside Bihar numbers, are yeah. huge. I mean, the other day I was in, uh, I was doing an election rally uh, three days ago in fairly remote North Bihar on the border of Nepal mm. in a place called Birpur, mm. uh, which has the Kosi. Which is just and there. Just yeah. there. And I, uh, Mr. Sushil Modi was with me, he asked the crowd, hmm. how many of you hmm. have gone to Delhi to look for jobs? Quite a few. How many have gone to uh, uh, Mumbai? Quite a lot. Uh, Punjab, Haryana, less. Hmm. Uh, some people have gone travel to Gujarat. And if you ask them, how many of you have traveled outside Bihar? There's a huge number who raised their hands, which obviously means that these are not migration out of options. These are migrations out of compulsions to seek and how, employment opportunities. And how that will change, actually, that's the question. I mean, The main thing is, really, I think it will change. I think if the, the Prime Minister's priority program on skill, skill inculcation, improved educational outcomes, coupled with lots of things, uh, small and medium industries, agro and agro-based industries, mm -hmm. should be able to provide alternative employment opportunities within Bihar itself. So but that only when the election comes, we will hear these voices, especially from the no, government I side. Why not? I mean, it's been a year, more than a year. Yeah. So what, what no, do you I see? Think the you talk to the average Bihari, some of them who sound educated and are looking at a new Bihar, as you call it, they are talking about what kind of, for example, tax benefits being given there, what kind of in, you know investment climate has been, uh, you know, well, very, by the central yeah, very frankly, uh, for 10 years, Mr. Nitish Kumar was very keen to get something which he called the spe special category status yeah. for Bihar, which meant basically tax benefits plus the benefit of uh, in the centrally sponsored schemes, getting a much higher proportion as a, a grant um, uh, and a much lower proportion as a loan. Mm -hmm. so, you know, centrally sponsored schemes of special category states have the burden not 70-30, mm. which is there in the general category states, but 90-10 when 10. it comes to special category states. Now, I think that this present um, government of uh, Prime Minister has given some of these in two ways. First of all, I think on tax concessions, which was um, a central part of the mm. theme, the, the finance bill, which Mr. Jaitley uh, got passed in Parliament yeah. this year, said that Bihar will have the same tax benefits as Andhra and Telangana which really meant uh, that huge investment allowance mm. and a huge depreciation allowance, mm. which really will be a strong incentive for private company to set up in, in uh, industries in Bihar. Not a tax holiday because that concept is gone. Mm. The new form of a tax break mm. is a, linked to investment mm. and therefore a depreciation allowance and an investment allowance. Mm. And as against the 4,000 crores, yeah. which... You know, you know when, when you really say all this, it looks very nice. And really, you know, music to the ears and, and especially to the Biharis who may, might be watching this show also. Uh, but there is a huge disconnect. I mean, when, when we are talking about economy and economic growth, we are also looking at Mr. Oweisi and Mr. Maji, uh, you know, look at the factors which are really playing in, in the present Bihar elections. Well, you know, it, uh, I, it will be naive for anyone to believe uh, that identity politics is dead. Identity politics is not dead. The only way you can make identity politics more malleable is to have the overarching concept of rapid development. And that is, I think, the kernel and central theme mm. of what the Prime Minister has been saying repeatedly, the tax concessions for one, mm. the huge special package which has been given to Bihar, that as I was saying earlier, which, that as against which I 4, think the other political parties would react to and say that, you know, the, if you really break it up, it doesn't sound so uh, glorious as it is. Well, it not, not really, because if you look at the ingredients of the package, excepting for two or three areas where you can say that these were things which were announced earlier. Yeah. First of all, between announcement and implementation, yeah. the heart of it is implementation. Some of it uh, may have been conceived earlier yeah. and it takes a long time to conceive schemes. For instance, bridge across several bridges across the but river there Ganges. there was an alliance earlier. I mean, it's only recent that BJP and JDU are not together, but there has been an yes, alliance for earlier. for seven years there was an alliance and that alliance struggled against the Congress government which was in existence to secure Bihar's rightful thing. And I think that in spite of all the efforts which were made, hmm. the Congress government was not particularly helpful in according a special category status. Hmm. Mr. Nitish Kumar championed this cause. 
I had helped him win this championship, but the Congress government was recalcitrant in giving this. Really it's asked therefore, you, therefore quite can, ironic yeah. that he, he is now partnering with the Congress. Can I really ask you also that you, you work closely with Mr. Nitish Kumar, is that, you know, the very fact, and since one traveled there, the very fact that we are still talking about the things that have happened, uh, I would say, you know, sounds some sense of victory, even if whatever results are, we don't know, uh, for the present uh, establishment. Well, let me put this way to you that out of those 10 years, for seven, more than seven years, he was part of the NDA and he was so acti act 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 acting in, in concert, in close concert with the BJP and that the person who is one of the important BJP leaders right now in Bihar, Mr. Sushil Kumar Modi, was a deputy chief minister and indeed the minister for finance and who had done a lot to be able to improve the resource capability of the state in order to make sure that adequate resources were available for development here is, expenditure. Here is a Nitish Kumar who, when you talk about women empowerment and how, you know, the kind of atmosphere created for a better society, I would say, uh, did work towards that. I mean, and people talk about it. No, there are several initiatives which were taken at that particular point in time. The, the, the bicycle thing yeah. for, for the empowerment of the girls, which improved, of course, the... Uh, overall, the kind overall of. atmosphere of security, comfort, the the reservation given to uh, to uh, women in panchayat, panchayat institutions, exactly. which really meant an empowerment of the women. And these were very positive things, but I think that one must see them in the in the con two context. First of all, one must see this in the context of what existed earlier, which is the earlier period with which you are comparing it. You are comparing it with the 15 years of the rule of Lalu Yadav. Therefore, isn't it ironic yeah. that the improvements which you are now seeing mm -hmm. in relationship to what? In relationship to the long years of, of misgovernance and development paralysis of the Lalu, who are now partners. Do of, you see uh, hope there that, you know, and somebody would say, critics would say that Lalu may, mainly became liability for uh, Nitish? Maybe? I don't know. I mean, you know, it's difficult because if you are, I mean, that is, of course, for the voters and the electors to judge. One must not come to uh, conclusions. We do not know the outcome uh, uh, of the counting is on Sunday. Today is the last day of the poll and one mustn't really come to uh, conclusion. But we'll that. come to uh, maybe better conclusions after this very short break that we're taking here on the quest on Rajya Sabha TV. We are talking to Mr. N.K. Singh. Very interesting analysis that's coming through him, but we'll really watch and uh, listen to him after this very short break. Don't go. Welcome back to the show. You are watching The Quest here on Raj Sabha TV. We are talking right now to Mr. N.K. Singh. You know, uh, in fact, Nepal, look at it. Nepal has become a, a problem again. We're talking about, and this has a connection here even when you talk about Bihar. Uh, I mean, the fact that, you know, you're now thinking of taking Nepal uh, to the UN table. I mean, how would you really even look at that kind of perspective? Well, very frankly, I think that uh, in this whole process, the government, the government of India was in touch with the authorities in Nepal. Because I think that what is now sought to be uh, protected are the constitutional rights uh, of people who are living in the what's broadly called the Madhesi exactly. belt. And protecting their rights, speaking for their rights, is something which is quite consistent with the Government of India's foreign policy. In fact, at the Government of India's uh, 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 at the, at the thing, we decided to send a special envoy for Mr. Jay Shankar. Our foreign secretary went to Kathmandu to hold a broad-ranging dialogue and we hope that ultimately the constitution which is adopted and implemented by the people of Nepal should be in the long-term interest of the people of Nepal. India has no interest in meddling in the internal affairs of, okay. of, of uh, Nepal but we are certainly interested that all segments of society and if the 40 percent of the people uh, feel themselves disempowered uh, I think that's a constitution which needs a second look. Coming back to Bihar again also, and since you wrote and I read this article interestingly, is uh, you talk about federalism uh, and give new dimension and talk about competitive federalism and cooperative federalism. So federalism, when you talk about at this stage, of course, uh, is very meaningful. Uh, but but give us a real pers perspective as to what's even in, the, in Bihar's context as to what's happening. I mean, what Bihar is finally... Why Bihar's what, context? Federalism is a concept which is a uh, pan-India concept. Uh, India is a large federal state. Bihar is, only, is an Im large, important federal state, but so are other states. And I think what is, uh, uh, what is the basic thrust of that article, which you are referring to, published in the Indian Express, is the manner in which 
federalism is evolving in the Indian context, hmm. uh, particularly in the context of the acceptance of the recommendations of the 14th Finance Commission. There are three important ingredients in that. First and foremost, is the concurrent list, has it really bec become too much? And has really more and more subjects been taken over by the central government, hmm. which in a sense is a disempowerment of the states and what should be left to the Because my next question states. is related. We are talking about GST bill and uh, the next parliament session will... Yeah, I'm to... coming to the GST bill, but let me complete yeah. this first theme. So that is one issue is the, the progressive enlargement of the concurrent list. The second is the important aspect that la large resources were being really, which should have gone to states, were being taken away from the states and was coming in the form of centrally sponsored schemes by the Planning Commission, which was a foreclosure of what was the rightful resources of the states, a proliferation of the centrally sponsored mm -hmm. states. Now that really, if you ask me, is also in a certain sense not quite consistent with the spirit of the Constitution. So I think these centrally sponsored schemes have now been curtailed and are being curtailed further, mm -hmm. so that the states, based on the recommendations of the 14th Finance Commission, which has increased the devolution of states from 32 to 42 percent, yeah. 10 percent sharp increase, will have not only the resources, but will be in a position to select, to design, and fashion and implement schemes how much which are best suited to their needs. Best suited is the word, how much really it works on the ground. And that's why uh, when you talk about GST bill, and that's where, uh, you know, some of these threads, I would say, uh, should be looked at because that, that's something that government is very upbeat about but has its own problems. No, on the GST bill, I think this has been in the works for God knows how many years. I would even forget the count and whose time it began. I mean, I can trace the thing that the ingredients of this GST bill began uh, quite a bit during the time of Mr. Vajpayee in the, in the earlier India government. I was working in that government. Hmm. Uh, that. So it has taken various forms, it has undergone multiple consultations. Successive finance ministers have tried to give this a shape. The previous government, Mr. Chidambaram took and Mr. Pranam Mukherjee took a very keen interest in yeah, promoting true. this thing. The GST bill as it has now broadly reflects the consensus among all stakeholders. It has gone to the select, it went to the select committee of the Raj Sabha. Mm -hmm. The recommendations of the select committee had now been received by government. And I think there is broad amount of acceptance on what the contours you see the GST. You a smooth road ahead? So, no. Or you don't? No, I, 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 I do believe that it is in everybody's interest for India to gain the advantage of one large unified common market mm -hmm. without the cascading impact of the multiplicity of taxes. And it would, I think, uh, be an important push and momentum to India GDP growth. Many people say that a GST can result in one to one and a half percent GDP growth to India. Let's look and watch at, uh, watch that also happening. Uh, a, a question which I think is really all around us and uh, I would not really pinpoint it to Bihar but something that is being talked about. You know this whole uh, talk about who's tolerant who's not uh, and then, then all kinds of debates happening, all kinds of views coming up. I would really like to know from you uh, as to what, what is the time that we are in right now? I think we are in normal times because, frankly, the Prime Minister has fully endorsed um, the President's uh, observations yeah. that uh, we are all bound to only one book and that book is the Constitution of India and the Constitution of India talks of equality and tolerance mm -hmm. and that the first one to really pick up on the present thing mm -hmm. is the Prime Minister. But, but the voices that we are hearing are voices. We can't neglect that. They are not silent. Some of them are vocal. And, and but there are also people in the party who are saying that these are people speaking on their own. I mean, say, for instance, the comment which was made uh, yesterday or day before yesterday against one of the important leading Bollywood actors. Yeah. People in, in the BJP party itself ha have really said that these remarks were, were unfortunate. And one of the persons who made the remark has retracted from the remarks because I think that the Prime Minister has clearly indicated mm -hmm. that really every Indian is bound by only one book and that, that book is the Constitution of India. Okay, uh, I, I will uh, come back to Bihar again and you are talking about again a new Bihar again and this term actually fascinates me also because when I talk to people I see this hope in their eyes and that's what in fact the new government is claiming that if it all gets power that's the road that it would like to take ahead but how would you look at this whole you know range and chain of challenges whether it's healthcare education preliminary girls safety uh, infrastructure 
how would you really like to take a look at Bihar, which really needs, I think, course correction in a huge dimension? No, I think the first and foremost, you, you need an atmosphere of uh, confidence and security and stability. Uh, the, the and piece, no magic wand can there, really bring about that. There's a which I wrote yeah. that uh, economic analysts have, have come to the conclusion that you get a stability dividend and you get a peace dividend. And that one would, uh, 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 that is, I think, if the, the, my BJP comes to power, which I very much hope it will, then I think you, there is no question of any instability. Because I think that the BJP's numbers that it has contested in, hmm. the, in the elections are significantly higher. And whereas all allies are equals and treated very well. As somebody would say in the local lingo that not only Bihar and not Bahar. So, I mean, somebody who's, who understands Bihar and, you know, deep-rooted in the whole ethos But who of said that the chief minister of Bihar, if the, if the BJP comes to power, will not be somebody from Bihar? I mean, who has come up with this preposterous idea that the chief minister of Bihar, in case the NDA comes to power, will be somebody thrust mm. from outside Bihar. This has never been contemplated. But uh, surely if this means that the prime minister must not... Because there was this that complaint the that the that local, the local influence is missing. I mean, maybe we saw the prime minister and we, we saw some but senior surely BJP it, leaders. It, but it would be quite preposterous to circumscribe that the prime minister of India is not the prime minister of every part of India. I mean, it would be... Uh, it would be quite extraordinary if his movements, his expressions and his views are circumscribed. He's not bound by any boundary. He has been elected constitutionally mm. by an overwhelming majority to be the Prime Minister of India till 2019. Uh, also, also tell me, Mr. Singh, as a thinker here also, the kind of discourse that we have seen in, in this Bihar election and the kind of statements, what we call Bayan Bazi, which goes on sometimes, how would you really look at it? I mean, I mean, uh, every time we really expect that. Look, I mean, you know, one can uh, uh, one can become the devil's advocate to say that many of these were counter reactions and reactions and and uh, for instance, I mean, uh, uh, on this whole issue of uh, the 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 oh, whole the beef bands, beef and cow. Yeah. The first one to raise this in the Bihar context was one of the important Bihar regional leaders belonging to the Mahagathbandhan. It wasn't the BJP who raised this for the first time. If you look at the manner in which this catapulted, it was he who raised it first. So, I mean, you know, I think that in... in because instead of talking about in the local elections, issues, lot are, of, in, are we not really taking, to talking about the central no, state the issue, the, the national the, issue? The, the, prime, so the prime minister was quite clear in all his rallies, and several of them I attended, development of Bihar, arising out of the special package which had been announced for Bihar was the central focus and development. What would it do? And I found that the but, youth... But, but the same centre which is fighting with price rise, the challenges of, uh, you know, the challenges of agriculture, so to say, as to how productive... I think let me put it this way to you, that it is scandalous on the part of the opposition parties. What is the average rate of inflation which prevailed in the 10 years of the, of the UPA government? That is what broke the back of an average person. The average rates of inflation have come down significantly in the last 18 months mm -hmm. to now the wholesale price index for a long time was because reading Because for example, zero. dal became a symbol. I, I mean, no, not the, that I want to really earlier, think Earlier, point. onion had become a symbol. So you cannot episodically select one commodity and say, there has been a global shortage, shrinkage in the production of dal. The reflexes have been the normal one, namely to import larger quantities of, of dal, which is what is being done. And as these imported dal comes in, and as de-hoarding gets uh, off the ground, and as the states begin to apply the Essential Commodities Act, the prices of dal have also come to moderate. But if you look at average wholesale price, the average wholesale price in the last 18 months have moderated substantially. Even the CPI index is low compared to what was in the previous period, which has convinced the Reserve Bank of India also to moderate the, the interest rates substantially, being convinced that interest rates are in a downward drift. Uh, you know, with your kind of experience and articulation, I think this show can go on and on, but I'll have to really wrap it up. But with a, with a quick comment from you as to, uh, you refer to the quest for Bihar, and uh, how would you really look at the quest, uh, let's say, from your side towards Bihar? I mean. What is your perception? My perception is that Bihar needs a huge quantum change in its growth trajectory in terms of if Bihar continues to grow at 10% or 12% per annum 
it would take roughly 15 years for Bihar to approximate all India averages in terms of per capita income, in terms of the key parameters on human development index. So I think that what I really will hope is that and wish and pray is that Bihar is able to achieve that kind of growth momentum which its poverty and development compulsions need and demand. Thank you so much for talking to us on Rajabha TV and wish you all the best and our quest for Bihar, I hope, change for the good actually. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, and that was Mr. N.K. Singh talking to us on the quest on Rajabha TV and range of issues that we tried to touch but I think many that we could not and we would really like to take in the next edition. Thanks for watching this particular edition right now. Bye-bye and Namaskar.